All right, this video here is to show how to replace the high fuel pressure pump on a 2017 Ford Fusion 1.5 liter. Uh, big shout out to Ford Boss Me. He made a video on how to replace it. I'll make one too to show you guys. I'll put his uh, YouTube channel in the description so you can check out his video. He's a Ford technician. Uh, ask him about how to replace a uh, high fuel pressure pump because I had a Toyota one that was similar to it that I had to replace. Uh, the one he showed, of course, is on the Fusion. But you got a, mine was a 17 millimeter here. And he did say uh, to replace this one here. There's people that's used this, reuse this fuel line, which I will. And that goes down. You just got to follow it down. That will go all the way down inside of there on it. Now, mine has this little black connector here. I was able to take two little flat blade screwdrivers and push those inside like so. And while pulling it out, I just took that out of the way. You got a 17 millimeter there. You also got a, I believe it was a T27 screw that you want to remove. And you got a connector, a little push tab right there. Push that in while pulling up. Then you can go in. Uh, Take everything out. What I would do before uh, messing with this, because I learned this the hard way on the Toyota one, is depressurize it. So what I did here, or you could have the car sitting, fuse box here. You're going to have a relay right there. So this relay here would go right there. I took that out, started up the car, and I let it kill itself. Therefore, it has no fuel in the line because I did that on I uh, didn't do that on Toyota and That was quite a bit of a pressure on it. I had fuel going everywhere. The engine was nice and hot, too So this car here has been sitting for a while. I depressurized it Engines cold so I don't have to worry about trying to start a fire But like I said, I'm in the process now of getting that uh, T27 screw out Which is right there and all you gotta do, give a little bit of a wiggle. It is held in by like a little O-ring. And you wanna just kinda pull out on it. All right, out it goes. Now, a little uh, bucket, tap it, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, try to come out with it. So make sure that goes back in place. You can kinda tell not too much of a scoring on there, just a little bit. If you don't do your mains very well, you're gonna see this, the bottom of that scored up because of that cam lobe down inside of there. Basically, you just put that back into place and just sits right on top of that little cam lobe. Now, depending how yours is, how your engine's turned off, you may have to take, I believe it was an 18, and turn that crank for that cam lobe to drop down and that bucket to go down with it. So you can put this back in because this is spring loaded. So if the cam lobes all the way up, you're going to be fighting it trying to get it to sit back in place. So this is the new version. Apparently this one here is the updated version. This is the new part. What I, what I always do, I like to take some oil and lubricate this O-ring. Maybe put a little bit of oil on this where it would uh, move around on that bucket there. All right, so this is a new one here. Uh, it doesn't sit all the way flush because of the cam lobe. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, you can turn that crank and have that uh, cam lobe where it goes down more. I did where I just, on the Toyota one, put a screw back in there, back in there. And I just went back and forth at it where it will sit flush. And while you're doing that, just kind of be mindful of this uh, hose here. Make sure that it will go inside of that little hole there when you go to bolt it down, not uh, underneath of it. All right, I got those two tightened down. I just, like I said, I just went from one end and just kind of go back and forth where it'll sit nice and flush. Make sure this little fella will go in a little bit. It ain't gonna push in all the way. And get that bolt in there and start it by hand. All right, so I got that on there pretty tight there. Now you're ready to go back on with this connector here. Push it into here, click. Now it locks in place. Go ahead, get your connector installed. Until you hear a click, just like so. 
Go ahead and put in your fuse. All right, after you get the fuse in, I like to press the brakes. I've noticed that it uh, charges up the fuel pressure. And when you hit the start button, it's gonna crank for a little bit, then it'll fire up because it's got air in the system. So mine fired up right there. And just verify that you have no leaks anywhere. So I'm feeling around. I don't feel any liquid. I don't see any oil coming out of the block where this would sit into. Just let it run. You can just let it run. Just verify nothing leaks. Alright, so I've had this running for a little bit. I don't see any leak. You are going to smell gas, of course, because you disconnected it. So what you want to look for is making sure it doesn't spray out or leak in any gasoline anywhere. Mine's all good. Like that, you have finished your job. Thanks for watching.